What's up people? How's it going? I thought I'd do a video on food and nutrition. And in fact, it's really an introduction to a series of videos I want to do on the foods we eat. But I'll get to that later. Food is quite an emotive subject. In fact, the link between food and emotion is ancient and very well documented. And it's there for a very good reason, our survival. In fact, any activity that's inextricably linked to our ancestors' survival is powerful and emotional. Reproduction, sex, nurturing others, and of course, eating. We have particular neurotransmitters like dopamine and oxytocin that reward us when we have helped someone or had sex or acquired nutritious or energy dense foods. These natural drugs drive us to do more of the same behavior. But when it comes to food, we're very confused. We are pretty much the only species on the planet that doesn't really know what we should be eating. I mean, a panda knows that it should be eating bamboo shoots and a lion knows that it should be eating zebra or buffalo or anything else that walks around eating grass. But humans, Hmm, should it be low fat, high carb, high fat, low carb, high protein, low carb, keto, paleo, DASH, Atkins, fasting, and the list goes on and on. One reason is that we are a very itchy feet species. We moved a lot and kept moving. And wherever we ended up, we had to adapt to whatever foods were available the forests, the plains, the mountains, the coasts, the deserts, the cold climates, the hot climates. And when we learned to control fire and cook, well, that opened up a whole stack of foods that were previously inedible. So we ended up being able to survive on a massive range of different foods. We became a highly adaptive survival machine. So what about today? the modern human. This is really an introduction to a series of videos I'll be doing over the next weeks and months, uh, taking a deep dive into food ingredients, the health benefits, if there are any, um, so the macro and micronutrients, phytochemicals, some of the history of the food and the environmental impact. So fruits, veggies, nuts, meats, fish, dairy. So to give you a snapshot example, let's take this pineapple. The name comes from the fact that it looks a bit like a large pine cone. And in Old English, pretty much every fruit was called an apple for some weird reason. In many languages around the globe, it's called some variation of ananas, which comes from the South American Tupi tribe. And it means excellent fruit. It's full of vitamin C, it's got magnesium and a rather unique enzyme called bromelain. It has an okay carbon footprint and a very very good water footprint but I'll go into more detail about the pineapple in its own video. The Brazil nut. It's an interesting one because it's full of selenium and we often lack selenium in our Western diets, but it also contains phytic acid, which is an anti-nutrient. The Brazil nut comes from wild Brazil nut trees in the Amazon. The tree is also very sought after as timber. But while we import and buy and eat Brazil nuts, then the tree is worth more alive than dead. I have a whole list of ingredients I'm going to cover, but if you have a particular one you'd like me to push to the top of the list, please give it a shout out in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell down below, and you will be totally on top of when one of these new nutrition nugget videos comes out. One thing that's worth remembering is that apart from wild animals, wild fish and wild plants, there is very little we put on our plates today that resembles anything like what our ancestors consumed. Um, animals and plants have gone through generations of intense selective breeding to make them uh, prettier, sweeter, produce greater quantities, fight off insects and disease, 
and to have longer seasons. So we'll just have to work with what we have and hope they provide the nutrition that we need.